You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to a very informative episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. So happy to be with you here today. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're coming up on episode 1100. This is not it, but we're getting close to it, which is uh, pretty amazing. So thinking about that, because I'm thinking about it because we probably will get there in terms of what we record today. And it just makes me very, very, very appreciative of all of you. So thank you for listening and sending in your questions. Please don't stop. AskDroneU.com. Yes, please don't stop sending in those questions as they are pretty important. So, um, but today's question I think is going to be great for everyone. Um, At least everyone that's a commercial pilot, right? Because you have your what? FAA certificate. And in the wake of the virus, some people's certificates, well, need to be renewed. What do they do? Well, since the FAA continues to waver on their answers, I think once again, Rob, uh, the proof is in the pudding. It's in the practical. Well, here's what they have to listen to as FAA employees. So here's what we can expect. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's it's kind of simple. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very quick, easy show, which I'm excited about because some of our last shows have been kind of long and they mm-hmm. and they take they take it out of me. So, um, and since I've been doing all of these webinars and all of these live classes, it's been quite uh, physically exhausting for me. But that being said, if you are listening to today's show. It is brought to you by the Drone U webinar series. Believe it or not, drone pilots, especially the successful ones, are making money in the wake of the coronavirus. That is right. As more and more businesses, realtors, developers, architects, and whatnot need to be able to showcase environments in a virtual space. We need to be able to see the inside and the outside of these spaces. Well, this offers a unique opportunity for drone mappers out there. So make sure you click the link below and join me for a webinar on April 15th and April 17th. Is I will be going over how to create lifelike 3D models inside and outside of buildings. What is the most efficient? way to do so what softwares should you use probably not the software you're, you're thinking about so join me uh, for that webinar it will be again April 15th April 17th I am throwing a live class so many of you can take advantage of this opportunity as it is definitely available I mean I've had three calls in the last week so that being said why don't we go ahead and play that funky question Rob I think we are all uh, greatly excited about it <laughs> Hey Paul, this is Jamie from South Carolina. I currently work as an emergency manager in the public health arena, so I've been a little busy lately. But my Part 107 renewal is due next month. With everything shut down and everything that's going on, what are my options? I know the places I could go and take my test again are all closed. Do you foresee any type of online options being offered by the FAA or any extensions granted? I'm trying to uh, get my own business up and going right before all of the economy just changed again and my work hours changed. So that's been put on a little bit of hold too. But did want to give a great shout out to you and the Drone U because uh, – all your information is what helped me pass the first time and has given me the motivation to keep going. Thanks. Wow, Jamie, thank you. Number one, thank you for uh, the work that you're doing on behalf of America, really, and, and how you're putting yourself out there at risk to help other people. That's, man, that's awesome. That's the kind of people that are involved in the journey community. And so we are so, so appreciative of you. And yeah, things are on hold, so to speak. But for those people who are in your position that are needing to recertify or wanting to take the test for the first time, I don't think there's a clear answer yet, right? I I don't think that the FAA has put out a clear answer other than I know Kevin M., good good friend of ours, uh, he he is trying to do the nice thing and letting people know like – uh, he, he wrote something on Facebook, but there, if I understand it, there's still no quote unquote official answer, but let's l- Rob, let's just break this down, man. Look, uh, FAA has stay at home orders, 
right? We know that. Mm-hmm. Um, the in fact, do you, would you mind looking that up really fast for me? The stay at home orders because it's really interesting, right? If you have a recency exam coming up, are you going to be able to retake your Part One Hundred Seven exam? Uh, no. Because let's be honest, right? Every everywhere in the world or everywhere in the United States, there is a stay at home order and, and groups over five are uh, unable to do business. And it's my understanding that cats uh, centers, uh, which someone had mentioned were recently purchased by PSI. Um, I know that there are cats testing centers that are not PSI. So I know PSI did just buy a bunch of them, but that being said, I know it is. Uh, there are other schools that are out there that are not PSI and are still CATS test centers, which means you would take the Part 107 uh, test there. So that being said, it's my understanding that all of these testing centers are closed. Okay, so let's think about something. Point number one. Okay, if the FAA has stay-at-home orders. Are they going to be having leap agents out and about talking to other people and doing enforcements? That's my first question. My second question, if there is no testing center and there is no online ability to take the test, do you think that the FAA is going to send an enforcement officer who's not allowed to even go to the office, let alone leave his house, to go enforce against people who they know who have had drone like licenses expire. I highly doubt it. I really doubt it. Uh, I really, 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 really doubt it. Uh, we already know that there's a problem with them trying to figure out where people are flying to begin with. So then deploying people that aren't allowed to leave their house, I feel like would be pretty hard. And since we know there is no online system, how are you going to take it, right? And I think that's kind of why the FAA hasn't really put out an official statement, because I think they want to tell everyone, you know, go ahead, do your thing. This isn't really our biggest concern right now, but I don't think that they want to put that out there. And this is a great opportunity, a great lesson for government agencies uh, in the wake of the virus. People want to know what's going on. Quips and pithy statements are no longer viable options of communicating. Um, Why can't the FAA just say, hey, look, guys, we know that you have a renewal coming up. We know you can't go to a CATS test center because the government's shut them down. So, and we know that we have no online test, right? So if there is no means of compliance, then how do they expect us to comply Um, I would look, I am not a lawyer. I just pretend to be one. I don't pretend (laughs) to be one, but, uh, I pretend to be the son of one. So, um, that I, I just me speaking, like me thinking this through, like as my father's son to me, it's like, okay, if there is no way to renew and they're not, they don't have an online system and they're not talking about it. It would be my understanding that as long as you attempt to renew, as soon as these testing centers reopen, that it is reasonably assumable that you should be okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, so you have two options, right? You have the option to go down that path and take the, I'm just going to be a reasonable... I don't see two paths, so help me out here. (laughs) Well, the other path is to fearfully say, I'm just going to stop filming. I'm not going to do anything because I don't know. And and Yeah, if that is your mantra, you probably should not be an entrepreneur. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm just uh, saying it doesn't. I mean, risk adverse people don't do the well idea on this. <laughs> about giving information is to give all the information. We talk about that all the time. True. So that's all we're doing here. I agree with you, but I wonder. And I don't. I don't know. I just wish, even if it was something along the lines of, "Look, we understand that this is the predicament that we're all in." As soon as there is some date that we can give you, then we will say, "Look, if you were to expire within this time frame, meaning whatever March fourth through." May 15th, if your expiration date was during that time frame, well, you'll have until May 31st or until yeah. at some point we'll give you a date that gives you a 30 day window or something along those lines or be ready because you'll have three days, <laughs> just something. Right. But there hasn't been anything like that. And, uh, you know, who knows why, who knows why, but the bottom line is just, it doesn't seem like something that it's worth worrying about. 
until there's more information. I mean, I appreciate people taking it seriously and saying, look, <gasps> I, I want to do things right, but I don't have the information to do so. Well, and I so, think, I, so so what's the next uh, uh, assumption, right? I know we shouldn't be making assumptions, right? Well, but the we're assumption, kind of in a position to have to make yeah, assumptions. Yeah, but the assumption is, okay, if you can't go to a testing center because it's closed, if the FAA has stay-at-home orders and there's no online system, well, X plus Y plus Z equals keep flying. Just again, you know, this comes down to, I had a dream about this last night, actually. Now that I think about it, I'm like, ah, I remember this. This really doesn't come down to the FAA. I'm going to say this again. I've said it a hundred times. I've said it since like probably the first hundred episodes of this show. The FAA does not control this industry. There, I said it. FAA doesn't control the industry. You know who does? The insurance companies. So again, as long as you're, you have to look at your insurance, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? Underwriting. And you have to see, you know, what is in your contracts. Because if you have to follow FAA guidelines, this is where I would struggle because as the son of a lawyer, right, my dad would say, okay, well, the FAA says, you know, that you have to have a certificate and they say that you have to renew it every two years. Well, the assumption is the insurance, you know, if you have an accident, for example, the insurance is going to say, do you have your FAA certificate? And the answer is yes. Were you following FAA guidelines? The answer is yes, right? But if your license expired, then I guess you would not be following guidelines. And I think this is probably why so many people want the FAA to come out and say something because the insurance companies need something in writing that says, okay, he may not be, you know, following FAA guidelines because the certificate expired, but because there's no way, again, to comply and to keep the certificate in compliance, it's kind of like a double negative. Can you really ding him for not complying if there was no way to comply? Well, but, and so we all know how insurance works, right? We sure do. And if there's a way out. They'll find one. They're going to find it. So that is the one thing to be, you're right, to be very, very aware of if you are going to be out fly. But I want to clarify something. So, I hate insurance. I'm just going to get, I just, we, I hate we insurance. Have to go there. I'm sorry. I hate insurance. I think of health insurance right now. What the most useless thing ever. I should just, it would be more fun to burn 350 bucks a month. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I think there's, you probably have a lot of kindred spirits out there, so I don't think you need to apologize. I hate the fact that insurance is probably in most people's cases, unless they're overpaying for cars or something. Oops, I probably shouldn't get on that soapbox. But um, insurance is probably the second largest expenditure for the family behind housing, right? When you add up all the insurances. And sometimes it might even be more than housing, depending on uh, your situation. But anyways. So you mentioned that there's a stay-at-home order from the FAA. Are you saying for FAA employees, or is the, has the FAA actually issued something to certified pilots? Because I didn't no. see that. No, 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 no. I just meant FAA stay-at-home order, like the, uh, yeah, here we go, novel coronavirus, FAA, FAA prepares list for FAQs. Let's see. See, they already, FAA, as of... April 9th, FAA extends temporary waiver of minimum slot use requirements. So they're waiving all these things about the the uh, airlines having to do things. FAA issues exemption to help protect flight attendants. FAA implements flexible air traffic control schedule. See, like they're really focused on keeping the national airspace going. I don't really think they 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 well. Okay, let's think about how the FAA thinks about drone pilots, right? And this is evident because, well, I've talked to half of them, and they think that most of us are are Best Buy divas, right? So, um, and they think that most of us, you know, go out and buy our drones and and fly willy nilly, um, which it, it I just love that word. it gets it gets me so frustrated because I see some of these same FAA officials that make fun of drone pilots, and yet these FAA officials post on social media about issues with uh, privacy and security and the election. And then you see the same people answering quizzes on Facebook, and you're like, do you not understand that this is part of the problem? Anyway. Anyways, so they have not issued some sort of a st- don't fly order to drone pilots, I guess is what I mean. I didn't think so, but I just wanted to clarify and make sure that's clear. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's really interesting? I just noticed the FAA announces additional COVID guidance for drug and alcohol testing in the wake of the virus. Uh, FAA steps to address effects on the aviation industry, air traffic control facilities, air carrier training exemptions, pilot medical certificates, FAA construction projects, airport construction projects, temporary parking for overflow aircraft, airport safety inspections... Looks like those are going to continue within required time frames. Um, I don't see anything. Expanded drone operations. The FAA has received inquiries about expanded drone operations to respond to COVID-19. We are addressing the inquiries using our pre-existing Part 135 on-demand certification process. That must have to do with drone delivery. Everyone's like, guys, we could solve this problem with drone delivery. And the FAA is like, wait, wait a minute. Drones actually have useful, useful, like, utilizations. They don't just cause uh, headaches in the airspace. Yes, we could save the whole virus by using uh, drones. Let's just follow the Chinese. They're not wrong about everything. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm on, like, political high horse right now. <laughs> like, we forgot to start the podcast off in the appropriate way, which was... We're grateful for you. No, 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 no. Which is true. Paul's fired up. <laughs> and we're going to get the fire extinguisher out. Well, again, I'm fired up because I think the FAA needs to come out and say something about this, uh, just so that there is something in writing to clear the air for people who may have to file an insurance claim. It makes me wonder, Rob, uh, like... Yeah, there's so many things I want to do in this industry. It's ridiculous, and I just don't have the resources to pull it all off. But anyway, I think we should end this show. You're you're diving deep. The reason I thought the FAA had a stay-at-home order, and I could be wrong about this, is because I know the NTSB had a no-travel stay-at-home order. Like, Talking about their employees. You yes, mean. back in April. So um, I'm wondering, yeah, travel advisory, um, travel advisory. So as of March 19th, they were telling everyone to avoid international travel. I'm not seeing anything, uh, any new information, but I wish the FAA would just not come out pilots, and huh? put out something that says, we don't expect you to renew your licenses until 30 or 60 days after. Until f Even just until further, further notice, notice yeah. would, be, would be great. But okay, I, I just got to give them the benefit of the doubt that they have their reasons. I don't know what they are. You're such a nice guy. Well, you know, I mean... The people that we know over there, they, they, they're doing their best, right? Like a lot of people are doing their best. And would we like more? Yes, we would. But I don't know. We can do better. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Paul. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>